it has been a while since I have done a video on the garage gym and everything I've done to it. I've done videos off-roading, I've done videos on my health, but I haven't done a really update on this. So I'm going to do a little walkthrough on my gym and you guys can determine what you guys think of the gym, if it's worth it, if it's not worth it. I feel it's worth it. This is something that's extremely important to me. And this is something that I've always done since I've been 14 years old. And it's something that means a lot to me. Uh, I hate going to the gym because the people, uh, people aren't bad. It's just when you have to wait on equipment or you have to wait on this guy or that guy. And then you got this person just playing on their phone, not paying attention. Or you have this group of guys want to hang out and talk and not train. And they want to spend more time on the equipment than what needs to be. And then you have this guy over here who should have is no business trying to lift what he's lifting. But he's trying anyways. Bless his little heart. So I decided that. Not being able to use chalk in a commercial gym, not being able to grunt or yell or be aggressive or lift heavy was a problem. Spending $200 on one of these little small corner gyms for powerlifting or for CrossFit, which doesn't have the equipment that I need for what I like to do, is just not worth it. So I decided to do this and here is my gym. I'm only missing a few pieces of equipment from here and eventually I want to get them. And I'm really excited about the way that this is turning out. Start off with the power rack, like always. It's one of my first pieces of equipment. And we got these deadlift blocks built out of angle iron so we can do block pulls instead of using the power rack and bending bars. We have the platform underneath that. And then in front of that, we got our bands. And eventually, we're going to move our box under here. And then we're going to get some monolith attachments to put on there so it'll be more for box squatting and with bands and, and chains. Uh, we got this bench right here. This is a fat pad bench, I think from Rep Fitness. And this is really nice compared to what we used to have for bench pressing. A lot easier in the shoulders, a lot easier on the bench press. Really do enjoy it a lot. It makes a huge difference when you're benching with something that's not narrow and has no padding and foam. And the T-bar row set up is basically just a plate with a little pendulum for T-barring. Safety squat bar uh, from Bolt Fitness, 150 bucks. It's a good bar, but the pads suck. They constantly move and fall down on your shoulders. So we just put a bunch of duct tape on there and that kind of little gorilla tape that fixed that. Uh, we got a platform for the half rack from Elite FTS. And then the box for doing box squats. And we got some foam pads so that way it, we can adjust the cushion if we need it now here's something very new that i'm very proud of and i'm excited to get i got these umax urethane plates we got 20 25 well, we got 20 45 we got 10 25s 10 10s two uh, four fives and two two and a halfs these are four dollars a pound brand new I got all the, just for the 45s alone, for 20 of them would have been $3,600. And I got them for the whole set, the whole set. They're all not right here. I got some spread throughout the gym. But the whole entire set was $630. It was an incredible deal I couldn't pass up on. So we got our chains hung up on both sides. You got a little board, two board for doing board press, deadlift jack, speaker, shop vac, chalk bowl, which has no chalk in it. I mean, it does. We got, got some chalk. Just haven't needed it yet and got my squat briefs. We built this little shelf right here because it was getting cluttered. I got my medal and my trophy. Yeah, first place. And then third place on this competition here. We got our wraps for knees and wrist, all of our collars, some wrist wraps, more collars, got a dip belt, lever, uh, lever belts, slingshots. <clears throat> this wall here, got our bars, Troy deadlift bar, Texas power bar, bolt power bar, 
Swiss multi grip bar, standard bar, New York New York barbell, cambered bar. Everyone has their purpose and everyone gets used. And I'm eventually going to replace this standard bar right here with a buffalo bar. Deadlift platform for bands. Leg press, hack swap machine, plate loading on a cable. I, I thought it was going to be a joke because it was cable loaded and it wasn't going to be enough. But the heaviest I got on this is 400 and the maximum load is 800 for it. And I could tell you what, doing sets of 20 with 400 is brutal. It's very brutal on this. It's not like your regular sleds on an angle where you can load up 1,500 pounds and do it for 10 and then go around peacocking. This will humble you pretty quickly on how difficult it is if you're doing sets of 20, that is, like I do myself. Right here we have the leg extension leg curl machine. You can do leg extensions or lying leg curls. Plate loaded, but it's very, very smooth and very efficient. Does not feel like it's plate loaded, it feels like it's a pin stack. Back extension, and this one right here, what's great is it could go from flat to 45 and everything in between. It, it has all the adjustments, which makes it incredibly useful depending on which angle you want to train. We have a plate loaded pec deck and reverse pec deck for delts and pectorial muscles. And the other thing I did in here, which I'm really proud of, is I painted the garage door, the black, and then I trimmed everything out, put trim. And I think it made a huge difference in the way that this gym looks. I think it makes a big difference in everything with the trim. I really enjoy the way the trim looks. I didn't at first, but it grew on me. It's really nice. And then I also blacked out the ceiling, so that way it's not so so much of an eye catcher it keeps your eyes down here on the gym it's really nice I, I do think it turned out quite well so now let's move on to here we got umax dumbbells going from five pounds all the way up to 100 pounds it actually goes five seven and a half ten twelve and a half fifteen 17 and a half, 20, and then from there it goes in five pound increments all the way up to 110s, which is a different style, but still. These dumbbell racks are 1300 a piece. I got two of them, and then the dumbbells are around $4 a pound as well. I got this whole entire set for 1500 Extremely proud of this too. Super happy, excited about this. It was a really good deal. Uh, you just can't really beat it. We also got the Bolt Incline Decline Bench, which you can't decline because there's nowhere to hook your feet. You just slide off. You, you can't do decline. You, you literally just slide off. It's, it's terrible. But for flat and incline and all the adjustments on incline, it's really great. But decline, just, just no, there's no way. There's the other bench that we built for doing bench press. We still have it for over here. So that way we got two benches for if we're doing multiple people and don't have to worry about fighting over a bench. Not that we ever fought over it. Got the ab bench. ISO lateral rower, which has the pivot handles, so that way it doesn't matter which way you want to grab it. It's more like a dumbbell feel when you're pulling on it. And I thought this thing was going to have a weight curve, like when you pull it so far back. I thought once once this came so high up, it was going to come weightless and it wasn't going to feel like those load. But no, it, it holds its weight all the way through. It's a very good piece of equipment, and for $300, it's, it, it's very smooth. And I was going to replace it with a hammer strength one, but after using it and getting familiar with it, I really enjoy it. And, and I, would, I would be foolish to get rid of it to get a different one because it does exactly what I need it to do for a fraction of the cost. This is new as well. We got a seated calf raise machine here, a gym commercial grade. This is a uh, maxi cam. So that's nice be able to train the calves other than just doing standing calf raises. Now we got standing calf raises just with dumbbells and then there's the preacher uh, leg press and then this for training calves. This is also new, I'm proud of this as well, this is the hip adductor hip adduction machine that's weight stack loaded. This is a $3,000 setup right here. I got it for a thousand. It's a really good deal too and people laugh like, oh, that's for women. No, it's not. I tore my groin doing squats three years ago, so groin strength is extremely important to me, training the groin, the hip adductors and hip adductions. 
Like it's it's very important to me having really strong adduction like adductor strength, especially on the inner thigh because that is a very weak spot prone for injury. So this helps keep it strong and healthy. I built a reverse hyperextension thinking that was going to help my lower back and groin and hips and hamstrings. It never did anything for me. I never felt any stronger. Never felt like I gained anything out of it at all. So I ended up getting rid of that, and I also got rid of the homemade preacher curl bench because. I just found myself never using it. I mean, it worked great. I used it for about eight months, but I don't even really train my biceps ever. So it, it was really no point. Uh, cable crossover system. With a seated cable rows, the high cable rows, cable crossovers. We moved this plate rack over here with all my other standard plates because there wasn't enough room over there for the other ones and these. I was gonna get rid of them, but decided, no, I'm gonna keep them because I could use them. And I didn't have enough room on that for all of them. So the other ones kind of got stacked up. And then of course we got all our attachments. I bought, the, I bought a lot of stuff in here. I built a lot of stuff. And then a lot of people pitched in and helped buy stuff. And then over here as well too, I, what I like is I trimmed everything out as well. And I also painted the garage door black, which looks amazing, especially with the dumbbells in front of it. It looks very professional if you ask me. I wish I could get far enough back so I could show you guys. Oh, I also put um, these gym mats down over here to kind of give the room some separation from like bodybuilding to powerlifting. And over here obviously is a more of a bodybuilding style gym, which I feel is appropriate for this side of the gym and then with all the trim and the blacked out ceilings i think the gym's really come along a long way i can sit here and, and and put prices on everything we also got this mirror right here trimmed it out and then of course the three mirrors along the back wall we got trimmed out and i can sit here and i can say maybe i spent too much money maybe i bought too much maybe it's not worth it maybe you know, I could have just went to a different gym for $10 a month and that would have been plenty sufficient. But having your own world to be able to come in here and focus and train and invite who you want to invite and have come, people come train that you want to be in here training with you and you don't have to wait your turn and you don't have to worry about being loud or chalk or grunting or the music that's being played or about being too aggressive. You can't beat it. You, you just can't beat it. It's, it's my little gym, my little piece of happiness. But if you guys are curious, watch the evolution of the gym. Go back to almost three years ago when I first moved in here. And actually go further than back than that, almost four years ago, you could go to when I lived in Friendswood. And you could watch those videos of whenever I was in Friendswood in a two-car garage. And the equipment that I had then, which was still, for that gym, I didn't do... A, uh, tour, but you can see in the videos of my training videos what I had and how nice they were and, and everything else, the equipment and the way I had it set up for the room that I had. But this place has slowly evolved, like I said, three years ago till now. You can slowly watch as this evolved. I got This is going to be the third video of my, my gym tour. So the first one I had almost nothing. The second one I had quite a bit. And now this one right here I'm a lot more complete. The only other things that I want really honestly is an actual real mono lift that I'll probably get put right here or put where the deadlift rack's at. And that's basically it. A mono lift, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do mono lift attachments on here. If this works out, I don't need to spend $3,000 on a mono lift. So it'll be the mono lift attachments and the buffalo bar. Now, if I could fit a, like an ISO high rower, ISO lateral high rower machine in here, I would, but I don't need that. At that point now, I'm just finding reasons to buy more gym equipment because it's, it's a, more of a hobby at that point, I guess, than functionality. But that's the gym. I'm proud of it.